Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'du Ahabita fillah Thought this would be important for us to just have a, a new reminder uh, About things that will help you in practicing your Islam Because first and foremost It can be a very difficult and lonely path Especially if you live in a place where there aren't other reverts like you Or you have a community that's not very welcome welcoming from whoever that may be because that can be the case unfortunately and what I would say is first and foremost do not give up hope on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored you above much of his creation to bless you with the ni'mah of, of, of al-islam that Allah has given you and favored you to become a believer in him and your practice is not based upon the practice of the people. Why do I say this? Because you will find so many people have so much cultural baggage, cultural forms of Islam and cultural expressions of Islam, which some of the people even claim is traditional. Yes, it is traditional, but it doesn't mean it's correct. It's not traditionally Islam, meaning it's not going back to the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how his companions, how they understood Islam. That's something you want to learn. So you begin by understanding that and learning about who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is. Learning about who Allah Azza Wa Jal is. You need to know who your Lord is, the one you worship. The one you dedicate everything because Islam is about that. That is the first, that has to do with the first pillar of Islam and the first pillar of Iman. Uh, the first pillar of Islam is to bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger. So you need to be grounded and know and understand that everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you need to know who Allah is. You need to know that all worship only go goes to Him. So anytime someone is teaching you that you can go to the graves of the deceased and pray to them, pray for them to intercede on your behalf, or that you need some intermediary or you need a scholar to come closer to Allah, or that you should pray have adoration for your sheikh or or others then know that these person these people are calling you to misguidance because islam is freeing you from the life that you had before which was servitude to many things in this creation and it is bringing you to the light of the servitude of the one who created everything subhanahu wa ta'ala this is your lord ta'ala so you want to make sure that you have some understanding about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He's the only one worthy of worship. That's what that entails when you take your shahada, when you t take the testimony of faith. And also, the first pillar of Iman is in tu'minu billahi. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the angel Jibreel came to him in the form of a man, letting us know that angels can come in the form of human beings. He came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni on Islam. He said, O oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. O oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, Al-Islam, and tashada in la ilaha illallah. Wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, Islam is to testify that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that means there's no prophets after him and there's no one after him that you need to be concerned about following as far as their sunnah and their their way that doesn't mean we don't have guidance from scholars and 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 how to practice and, 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 and learning our religion. 
but we're learning our religion. They are showing us how to practice a sunnah. That's, that's what it is. They're a means for us to practice the religion. But when Jibreel came to, uh, so when the Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam, and then he said in the second, after he talked about the five pillars of Islam, he said, فَخْبِرْنِي عَلَى iman." Or he said, "Akhbirni on the man." He said, "Tell me about faith." Then the Prophet sallallahu said, uh, and, "And that's what I began before." He said, "And tu'mina billahi." He said, "Is to believe in Allah." That was the first pillar, to believe in Allah. So that means that you need to know who Allah subhanahu wa taala is, so that way you have, uh, which requires that you have knowledge of who Allah subhanahu wa taala is. And to billahi to believe in Allah. Well, you need to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. You need to know that He's the only one worthy of worship. You need to know that He's the Lord and sustainer and provider and creator of, of everything. He's the Rabbil Alameen. He's the Lord of all things. He is Ar Razak. He's the provider. He is Ala Kulishian Qadir. He has He's over all things omnipotent. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, you need to know. That he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has divine names and attributes which are unique to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, for example, we believe what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself in the Quran. As it came in the Quran, and we don't have to ask how. We don't have to make a resemblance between us and the Creator. We don't have to, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of His names, He is Ar-Rahman. He is the most merciful. That is His name. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know His name from the Quran. And He said that He is the most merciful. We know that people also possess the quality of mercy. Okay? Hopefully your parents were merciful to you. Uh, generally the fitra or the, the, gener the general, general rule is that mothers are so merciful to their children. Generally, you know, unless she's an oppressive mother, or she's a drug afflicted mother, whatever the case may be, that caused her to go away from her innate nature or circumstances. But generally women, the mothers are so merciful to their children and the, they're the most merciful. But... We don't make comparison between the, the mercy of Allah and the mercy of creation. So although a mother is merciful, and let me tell you something. If I were to run into a bear out here, and it was a mother bear with her, I think they call it a sow, and run in with her cubs, they will charge you, even if you are no threat, they perceive you as a threat. And she will do everything to make sure that I'm either dead, or the threat is gone, okay? That is from her mercy. And that is her general inclination for those little cubs. She will do what it takes. That mercy is unlike Allah's mercy. So that is very important for us to understand that although we will find traits that have the same name or attributes that have the same name in this world, and that way we understand we have an idea about what it means. We, we, the meaning is known. But the how is unknown. We don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. We only know what he described, him, how he described himself in the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So that is very important for us to understand when it comes to the divine traits and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we have to know and understand this concept of Tawheed, the concept of, 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 of monotheism. What does it mean, Islamic monotheism? Because it's unique to the other faiths that have what they consider monotheistic beliefs. Another point I want to mention, I guess as a piece of advice is the importance of keeping good companionship, good company. 
people who are going to remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who are going to help you learn your religion, people who are going to be a source of good and a good reminder for you because this will help you to remain Muslim with all the challenges that you face and all the doubts you may come across or things that might come into your heart. You're going to need good reminders. So read the Quran often. Read the Sunnah often. And do what you can to learn more about Islam. And learn it only from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.